Hi and welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm sure you've been told many, many times when you've been developing as a photographer and reading forums, reading advice, watching YouTube videos, etc. That in order to develop as a photographer, you need to find your own personal style. You need to put out a consistent portfolio that shows the world that you know exactly what you're doing, that your style remains consistent. All well and good. Now, I do not think that's the most important thing, and I think most photographers focus on that far too early in their careers. Now, let's talk about what I do think is more important, which will help you ultimately find style. The intent behind your photography is far more important than your style, and it will inform your style. Already, some of you are thinking, I'm sounding a little bit too deep and a little bit pretentious, and there's probably some truth in that, but it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I can articulate this. I have always feel like I've known it, it's taken me a long time to reach the point where I can articulate it. Every photograph you take has a purpose. You might not think it has, but it has. Even if you think you're just happy snapping, there's a purpose there. You're normally trying to record your family's history. You're normally, you may just be trying to learn how a camera works. There is always a purpose to why you're using the camera. Now, for me, in my own portraiture, which is the main thing that I photograph, I focus on generating a genuine emotion from my subject. My subject is generally children. I know that lots of photographers out there look down on my photography. They see family portraiture as one of the lowest types of photography. Some people think commercial is where they want to be, or art is where they want to be, and they see family portraiture as quite um, basic and lowbrow, etc. And that com is compounded by the fact that I use quite flat light, very flattering flat light, um, huge octoboxes dotted all over the place. But the reason, there is a reason that I use that. My aim with the children is to get a genuine, genuine human reaction so that when the family look at that photo, they think, yes, that's our little Johnny. And in 20 years' time, when they look at that picture, they will feel the emotion of knowing that that's a genuine picture of little Johnny, not a contrived portrait of little Johnny in his best coat stood by on the beach as if he's going to some sort of wedding or function, um, looking all solemn. Now, that is a style of photography that I know a lot of people like, that sort of fine art thing, but it's not for me, not at this stage in my career. My style is often seen as either flat looking black and white, or these very bright, um, white, high key, um, joyful images. And I know a lot of people look down on that, but they've been informed by my intent. My intent is to get a genuine human reaction, with children particularly, you cannot ask them to stay still and get that. You need to engage with them constantly. You need to constantly keep moving them forward, constantly interact with them, constantly try to amuse them. And you need them to be able to feel the freedom to move all over the place and not suddenly get a weird shadow across their eye. That's why I use flat light. You may not shoot for portraiture, and that's not what this is about. If you can drill down yourself into what the intent of your image is, that will inform your style. Now, this is a story I'm going to tell you. Um, from 2016, when I first got my Pentax KF2, and I took it down the beach for a walk just to um, play with it. So my intent there was to take photographs that would help me understand the camera. So while there was lots of photographers there taking pictures of the lighthouse at Roca, which is widely photographed um, as it gets battered by the waves, I was wandering around taking pictures like this one on the screen of a wall so that I could understand the dimensions of my lens. So there was intent behind my photographs, even if my photographs were particularly boring. I was drawn to other things because my intent was to understand the camera. It wasn't to capture a great photograph that day. But anyway, there was lots of photographers there, landscape photographers taking photographs of the lighthouse. And one photographer spoke to me as I was walking along um, because I had a Pentax and he asked if I was shooting film. Um, he'd never seen a film camera like that before. <laughs> so I'm sure Pentaxes out there know that um, it's a widely held belief that Pentax doesn't exist anymore in the digital era. So anyway, we got talking and we talked about his image. And he was taking this wide image of Roka Lighthouse with the waves bashing against it. And he travelled up from North Yorkshire, which is what, maybe it's an hour and a half drive um, in order to take the photograph because it's considered to be quite a scenic photograph. And I asked him, as somebody who's not interested in landscape, what was so interesting about taking a picture of Roka Lighthouse? And he explained to me that for him it's the drama of the waves bashing against this stone structure that's seemingly stood out in the middle of nowhere because there's not much else in the frame, as, as one has to say. The sky was very dramatic, there was lots of clouds and things like this. And as we were talking, he suddenly said to me, 
So why, why am I taking such a wide shot then, really? I don't understand. I don't understand. And he's, he's, he stood for a minute and then he switched to a 7200 and he started taking close up crops. Uh, that didn't actually show the full lighthouse, but showed enough that you would know it was a lighthouse and the waves banging against it. Now, I don't know if those photographs were better than the ones he originally took. I don't know enough about landscape photography, to be honest, um, despite watching lots and lots of it on YouTube. But I really think that he probably took some images away that he wouldn't necessarily have got just because he took the time to think about the intent behind his photography and that's what informed both the composition of the photograph and again when he gets to the post-processing I would like to think that it would also inform the post-processing. Now how does that lead on to style? Now generally in photography I find that people photograph similar things over and over again because they are interested in that subject matter. For me it's portraiture, for you it might be landscape photography, for somebody else it might be still life. When you understand the intent that you're Photographing, you start to make artistic choices, whether that be with lighting, whether that be with crop, composition, post-production, and those choices, you make them to better serve the intent of your photo. As you make them, a style evolves, and then you have a consistent style, because your work has become consistent in order to achieve the objective. Rather than, what I see a lot of photographers do, is they like the style of a certain photographer, and they try to imitate them, and they keep working that way for quite some time. And they never really actually achieve a consistent style because they're not thinking about the intent of their photography, they're thinking about the style that they want to portray. But one more thing, style doesn't need to be consistent and it doesn't need to last forever. Now, I am definitely better at business than I am at photography. My background is business and I totally and utterly agree that in order to get bookings at a good rate and to sell well you need to put out a consistent portfolio so that people feel that they can put you in a box and they can understand what you're doing and you are the expert for them you are the perfect photographer for what they need but that doesn't mean your style can't evolve it just means that what you're showing to the public has to be consistent now whenever you talk to a photographer about their website and you ask them to show them your portfolio they will always say to you to a man it's not finished yet, it needs a little bit of work. Perfect. Your portfolio should never be finished. It should be finished when you're in the grave or when you've actually given up photography forever. Your next photo should always be your best, in your head anyway. That's what you're always aiming for. You're always aiming to improve and your portfolio should always be building. So how, if your style's evolving, do you maintain a consistent online portfolio? Now, within the businesses I've been involved in, one thing that I've always found works really well for me. The first Monday of every month, I do the accounts. It doesn't have to be in depth, but it just keeps it enough on track that when it gets to the end of the year, I haven't got this mammoth task or this mounting thing in the back of my head. Now, I would suggest that you do the same with your portfolio. Pick a day that you do portfolio review every month for yourself. Don't pick the first, the second, the third, the fourth, or anything like that. Pick the first Monday, the second Monday, the third Thursday, whatever. So make sure it's a day of the week when things are always going to fall okay for you. So some months it'll be a month, four weeks before you review it, some weeks it'll be five weeks. And what I suggest you do is sit down, look through all the photographs that you've taken in that month and processed and prepared and they're, they're finished, completely finished. They don't need to be touching, they're done. And think, do any of those deserve to be in my portfolio? Are they better than what's already there? And if they are, put them in. Now, you should also set a cap for how many photos you're going to have in your portfolio. If you're going to exceed that cap, you need to be really truthful with yourself and remove the things that don't belong there. Just pull them out. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I've taken on a slightly different style this month, or I've done something a bit different, that's going to stop my portfolio looking consistent. It won't. Structure the order of the images in the portfolio so that they're at the end the new ones if they're taking on a new style. Because style does not happen overnight. Style evolves. So as long as you keep them consistent, look for, when you're working with images to pull out, try, don't always go for the best image to take out or the worst image to take out. Go for the one that no longer fits and try to create a progression of where you were to where you're at. And as you filter more images in, as your style changes over time, you can keep a consistent style with a consistent portfolio well, actually, your style has changed a lot over the years. 
if you want to have a separate gallery or something like that that shows your best of your best ever over time then do that but if you're trying to get work that people are paying for the consistency is worth it so try to keep that portfolio that evolved now this is something i don't do but it's something i should do it's something i'm going to do and i think it's a good idea for everybody if you treat your portfolio in the same way that you would treat your account then you can continually maintain it and keep it updated but don't ever think it has to be finished it's never going to be finished not if you're actually enjoying what you're doing now thank you for watching if you watched this far if you thought this was useful if you think i'm an idiot give me a thumbs up if you think it's useful give me a thumbs down if you think it's not give me a comment if you think i'm an idiot give me a comment if you think i you agree with me um i won't ask you to subscribe if you want to subscribe you know how to do it you don't need me to tell you anyway take care and i'll see you soon